Eddie Maguire, welcome to the Blue Abroad YouTube channel, mate. Why am I here, Terry? What is this thing? I feel we like I've been uh, somehow got Stockholm syndrome all of a sudden. <laughs> it's a funny world we live in, mate, isn't it? You're on a, a Carlton Good to see. Well, it's uh, it's always great in the in the build up to Collingwood Carlton. It's uh, it is a very very special game. It's uh, one that affects me like no other. I think it's partly because uh, when Collingwood plays Essendon on Anzac Day, the build-up and the significance of the day is completely different. But from as long as I can remember as a little boy, even you know when I was five years of age back in 1970, building up to a Carlton game was just something. Uh, you know, even now, you know, on match day, I get I get fired up. So it's uh, it's fantastic building up for a Friday night football game. We normally play during the daytime on the weekend, so it's going to be something special this week. What's your earliest memory of the rivalry? How far back does it, does it go? Well, I, I go back to 1970. It was uh, the year I actually became a Collingwood supporter. Uh, it's funny because Carlton are, are, are large in my in my life, if you like. Uh, if I lived over literally over the back fence, I would have been in Carlton zone. I was in North Melbourne zone out in Broadmeadows. So, you know, a lot of the heroes were, were local heroes. Were Bruce Dool, who lived around the corner. Curly Austin, who lived a couple of blocks away. You know, I had Mark Dawson, who played at North Melbourne, who lived across the street. So these guys were superheroes. You know, can you imagine what it was like uh, uh, having these guys living uh, in, in close proximity? So 1970, I, I you know, fell in love with the Pies. My family actually broke for Essendon. Um, and, uh, and Carlton Loom Large, a best mate at school, Barrack for Carlton. Uh, over the years, a lot of my great mates have all been Carlton supporters, which just makes it even more interesting on, on match day, of course, you know. Uh, I had great relationship with uh, the Carlton players. You know, Mark McClure is still one of my best mates. He's, he was going to come to the game with me on, on Friday night with his wife, uh, Virginia. That he comes to the footy with me. I used to go to uh, Alex Marcuse's house in Thomastown for, for dinner parties back in the day when I was a young reporter. And yeah, McClure and I became great mates because in the 1986 grand final, um, I was supposed to do a live cross with Robert Walls for Channel 10. And uh, there'd been a, a problem with our live eye anyway. Wolsey was in, in match committee, so <laughs> this shows you how keen I was. I've knocked on the door of match committee as he's picking a team for the grand final and said, we're going to do the live cross. Well, you imagine what the look was like from Wolsey and uh, Wes Lofts and the guys. So I went back into the uh, the Carlton rooms and the only person who was there was McClure coming out. And he had a towel wrapped around him coming out of the shower. And I said, mate, I need you. I need to do this uh, this cross on Channel 10. And he said, oh, all right, okay, no worries. And he sort of, you know, McClure was like laconic meanders into the room, puts on a Carlton uh, top, comes out with the towel still wrapped around him in his bare feet, at which time I'd been told that the uh, problem with our, our live eye van on Channel 10 was that it was uh, the cable broke, so we could only get the cable to the car park. So I've had to get McClure to come out on the Thursday night, cold as you can imagine. Imagine how many Carlton supporters were at Prince's Park for, for training that night, and he stood there with me. So we go out, and I'm ready to go. And because we were late with all this mucking around, they crossed to Steve Quartermain, who was at Hawthorne. And uh, so McClure had to stand out there for the best part of seven or eight minutes while Quarters was doing his cross before he came to me and I said to him, mate, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget you ever. And we became great friends from that moment on. But uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of the Carlton stuff there over the years. So going back, uh, I remember as a little boy, I was five, um, sitting in the backyard in the 1970 grand final, listening to it on the radio. And... Um, the kid over the back fence said to, or the side fence said to me, no, you've got the double chance. Colin has got the double chance. I remember running into my brother saying, oh, you know, we got done, but we've got the double chance. And he, he gave me the mail very quickly. He said, there's no double chances in grand final. You're done. And that was it. So, yeah, uh, the Carlton battles were always great. My hero was Peter McKenna, who knocked up kicking goals against Carlton in those days. Uh, but sadly, yeah, you know, got cleaned up by Tuddy in the 70 grand final. And I think he had five at half time. So, yeah, from that moment on, it was always big time. So there's Carlton, obviously a big Carlton presence out in the northern suburbs. Uh, I used to go to Princess Park uh, a lot. You know, we in those days you used to get tickets uh, given out at primary school, and you'd go to the games with you know a lot of your mates. You'd go with them next week. They'd come with me to Collingwood games, etc. So yeah, I saw all the greats, and uh, so I've got for for all that, <laughs> you know, the the great rivalry with Carlton. I've had a tremendous you know, relationship. Uh, I mean, I'll go on even further if you like. I remember the only time I've ever felt overawed in my life meeting somebody was I started writing for the Herald and uh, doing, this, doing the stats when I was 13 for the on the Saturday. I didn't know how young I was. Right. And anyway, I, I, I covered a game out with my brother who was the, 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 the journo in those days for the Herald. 
And I remember going in after the game. I've got his suit on so that I look a bit older. And uh, so I'm about 13 or 14 years of age. And uh, we went into the Carltonians room and all these, you know, it was just amazing for me, all these men smoking and having a drink and high powered and I think, wow, this is unbelievable. And then we went into the Carlton committee room and waited for Jezza to turn up. And it was 1978. So Jezza comes in and just had a win. He's been captain coach for, you know, a couple of weeks. And, you know, the, the day before I'm trying to take a Jezza in the, in the schoolyard and here's Jezza. And uh, I shook his hand and I just remember thinking, wow, this is Alex Jezzelenko. And uh, again, I became good friends with Jezra over the years. And, and then later on, as I started working at Channel 10, Lou Richards used to do the Carlton President's Lunch for John Elliott. And uh, Lou uh, worded up John and said, uh, you know, he's a good young fellow this by coming through. And, and, you know, John and I became great friends. He took me a little bit, to, not under his wing so much early on, but acknowledged me. And then later on, when I became Collingwood president, we became great friends and used to work together behind the scenes to keep the Collingwood Carlton games going. It's good for business for both of us. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, so, so you know, it's like anything in life. You know, the, the great thing I love about Collingwood Carlton rivalry is that, uh, yeah, the worst that happens is you have to cop uh, abuse from your mates and buy tax lotto tickets for the next week or so. Um, and that's what's great. Going back in my family history, you know, my parents came out from from Scotland and Ireland in the in the late fifties, and uh, I was born in Australia. I was the, only, the first one born in my family in Australia. But Carlton also sort of seemed to me to represent Glasgow Rangers, and I was a Celtic supporter. So right. The, the, the well, CFC of, of Celtic and Collingwood, and and they're very similar uh, setup compared to Carlton. That was set up by Redmond Barry, of course, who put Ned Kelly to the to the gallows. And uh, their traditional navy blue with the insignia like Rangers with their insignia and the orange piping originally because they were the, the Protestant team. So there was, a, there was a historical, in my mind, connection between Collingwood and Celtic and, and Rangers and Carlton that just added a little bit of historical edge to, uh, to, to my thinking when Collingwood played the Blues. Right. Well, I was going to touch on the hatred but i oh, know i'm sensing a soft spot for carlton ed no i have got a soft spot it's a quarry at the back of broad meadows yeah, <laughs> no, i've got no soft spot for them I, I have i have respect for them i have a lot of great friends but as i said don't worry when i when i go to the game with carlton collingwood i'm, I'm focused up you know all i want to do is beat carlton they've broken my heart too many times the blues um over the journey and um, we've had some fantastic games and uh, but uh, you know I think they're, they're still a little bit ahead on the on the uh, emotional win loss quote with me. The the one thing when I took over as president of Collingwood, I wanted to do was make sure that we got the win loss balance back into play. And uh, thankfully, we did that uh, by the time I finished. In fact, the, the first game that I went to after finishing up, we we went one clear against the Blues. But you look at that and see over what are we up to about 128 years now, and there's I think two games different. Just shows how amazing this rivalry has been. And, you know, I, I, you know, a lot of a lot of people in the last 20-odd years have said, how come, you know, has it really still got the same edge? Yeah, we'll turn up on Saturday, on Friday night and just listen to that roar. You know, it's guttural. Football looks proper when the MCG is green and Carlton are in the navy blue and Collingwood's in the black and white stripes. And you hear Lily of Laguna, that, uh, that song that haunts me, Come out, and then you hear the Collingwood song go, and then it's on. Uh, it is. It's. 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 Uh, to me, it's pure football. It's. It's what football and tradition and rivalry is all about, and uh, that's why you know you can't have Collingwood Carlton without Carlton, and uh, and, and uh, that's why over the years we've actually worked together to to, to make things work. And uh, and as I said, over the years I had tremendous uh, friendships with uh, Ian Collins, Stephen Goff. Yeah, you know, all these uh, Wes Lofts was a, you know, became a friend, and uh, yeah, it was. It's, it's one of those things. It, it, it's great. It's, to me, it's what AFL football is all about. That uh, you sit next to each other, you're screaming, you're barracking your heart out, but at the end of it, we all walk home together and go and have a drink. Absolutely. Uh, my my experience is very different because you know I'm born in '91. I don't really remember '95 or '99, and then when I when I zoom into the the rivalry. It's heartbreak on the other end. Round 23 last year was real heartbreak. And yeah, it was, it was great, like, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, it was, it, was, it was good for Don't three and a half. Don't heartbreak when you got Harms knocking the ball back. 
and you know, and you got 1970. Come on, give it a spell, you know. And uh, and then you got 79, and then 81. In fact, when Ashman kicked that goal to go in front uh, late in the in the last in the third quarter, third quarter or in the, no, in the last quarter, that ball actually bounced off me. I was standing behind the goals. It bounced, <laughs> it came hit me. <laughs> You know, I wanted to jump the fence. You know, I wanted to smother it. <laughs> so well, I'm living through the bad karma. And 125th, you got to see, got us in our 100th as well. So, you know, don't give me, give me a spell, okay? <laughs> well, I'm, it's good to I'm, get one back. <laughs> I'm having to live through the, I think it's the Collingwood karma for that generation that just couldn't it is, get it yeah. done against the Blues. And I don't know, I hear the story of the Carlton Football Club, but I mean, I live in a time where it's been a very humbling experience. Like there is nothing... There's not too much yeah. to be arrogant about. There's a great well. Let me give you the tip. You, 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 there was plenty of uh, karma of humbling to to catch up on because, yeah. But that's why I love the I love the uh, the Carlton swagger and the arrogance and you know back yeah. in those days. Uh, you know the, the the Carlton sides and the Collingwood sides. You know McClure were up against uh, Billy Pickin and uh, you know these fantastic games. I was there when Stan Magro ran through um, Jezza, but also I was I remember uh, Wayne Johnson belting uh, Ronnie Weemouth out in front of the old. Uh, press box at Carlton this day, and and then went to uh, uh, Ricky Barham, and it was on for young and old, and you know those great games. You know, big Nick. You know, I, I'm I'm young enough to remember Nick playing up against Len Thompson, and 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 these great games. They're just, they're just fantastic, and you know, going out to Prince's Park, and you know, in front of the old uh, in front of the old scoreboard, I used to stand out there and barracking, and you know, it, it was on. It was really on. It was great rivalry, and you know, but Carlton. As I say, you, you can't have the pies without having the blues and the blues going. Yeah, mm. Carlton's a, a, you know, a wonderful club, and uh, and when they're going, it adds so much to football, you know. And uh, you know, I love the the arrogance of George Harris. You know, what's better than beating Collingwood by ten goals in a grand final, beating them by five points? You know, and uh, later in life, I met uh, I met George a few times, and actually uh, was at a function where I signed his. Uh, I signed his uh, uh, his uh, menu, and I said, "What's better?" I think Collingwood had beaten Carlton that week. What's better than beating Carlton? You know, I returned his quote, which he put into his book. Which, to me, as a as a kid who you know was still in uh, still at school, you know, when seventy nine was on, and and uh, Jezza and George and all those big people. The fact that George Harris even knew me, far less that I ended up in his autobiography, still makes me shake my head. So, you know, you look at those days, you had Big Nick, you had Swan Mackay, you had Chiesa, and then later on when you had McClure and Dominator and, you know, Bomber Sheldon became a great man as I said, Marku and, and, uh, and these guys were all... And I was, you know, going to nightclubs with them, you know. I was, I was with them in the, the underground on the Friday night and then the next day they'd go out and, you know, turn it on the third quarter against teams. And, you know, they were great days to go to the President's you know, we'd go to the Carlton Understand, which was the nightclub back for all the guys from Broadie. 15 bucks all you could drink on the Friday, 20 bucks all you could drink on the Saturday. Yeah. They, were, they were big nights, you know. So it, it was it was a big part of big part of my my life. And and also the fact that the Carlton guys all knew I was a mad Collingwood supporter was just was fantastic. And so Colin Deludis, who was the vice president, is yeah, my lifelong best mate. So uh, it's been hilarious over the years, all the, the to and fro of all these things. So yeah, yeah, it's great. That's what means so much. Yeah. How have you watched the evolution of the landscape of how we cover the game? I mean, you obviously were at the forefront yeah. at the start of your career. And now we move into this internet, digital age, distribution platforms have really expanded. So there's just more There's more appetite to, to talk about the game. How have you well, watched there's, that? There's, yeah, there, well, there's more, more platforms. But to, to me, it's still the essence is there. Uh, unless... It matters uh, unless mm. you unless you're getting a shiver down your spine when Collingwood and Carlton walk to position at seven forty on Friday night. Then it doesn't make any difference. You can mark it as much as you like. It's got to be on, you know. And and I know what I'll be like. I mean, I'll get up, you know, on on a when it's on, you know, two o'clock. I'd get in the shower and just, you know, you just it's on. You know, yeah, my family don't talk to me on the on the drive into Collingwood Carlton. You know, and uh, you know it'll probably be the same on uh, Friday night when we drive to the game. It just it just clicks in. Um, you know, as I said, uh, at one stage the the AFL wanted Carlton to wear a clash jumper against Collingwood, and I said under no circumstances, there's no way known that Collingwood's going to play Carlton without them being in the navy blue jumper and us in black and white. You know, are you kidding? 
this, this just ain't happening, you know. And and I go back to the you know the nineteen ten game that that forged the Collingwood Carlton uh, rivalry. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Terry, but this this happened uh, in the grand final where Carlton went the went the bash and Collingwood won in nineteen ten. Chuck McCall was playing, and that's where the 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 uh, the, uh, uh, the battle started to begin. But you know, but Carlton actually was the team that voted for Collingwood to come into to come into the VFL. You know, they realised that Collingwood was good business, that this was a good rivalry. And uh, Fitzroy were trying to get in their way. And so there was a good relationship originally between Collingwood and Carlton. And, of course, you know, our first, our first captain was a, a originally a Carlton player, uh, the great Harry Curtis, who's, who uh, was president for Collingwood for two more games than I ended up doing, was originally a Carlton player who came to Collingwood and then became one of the greatest Collingwood figures, uh, you know, during all that period when we won four in a row and, and built the Collingwood club and turned Collingwood really into, into Collingwood. Yeah, so so there was all those things over the journey. As I said, you know, uh, John Elliott, myself, and Colo, and and uh, and uh, uh, Stephen Goff. You know, we we worked very closely together over this. So for me, as much as I enjoyed, you know, Carlton's uh, lean period over the last twenty odd years, at the same time, I I uh, I was I was very keen, and I'm, I'm still keen to see them, you know, back in town because we we want the Collingwood Carlton's, the Essendon's, the Richmond's, these games really meaning something, and uh, you know. We've seen it recent times that Richmond are playing Carlton and Collingwood's playing Carlton and the Blues are going all right. I mean, last year, that game that broke your heart, you know, at three-quarter time, you weren't uh, worrying too much, were you? You were, you were right up uh, on your toes. I had a vein pop out of my neck. I was, I was a bit lippy at three-quarter time. Not yeah, of course you were. And that's the way it should be. And that's what used to happen. We were probably lippy. I, I imagine what it was like at halftime at the 1970 grand final. But, uh, yeah, they've just been they're great games. And uh, and as I said, and that's why I always fought. You no, know, Carlton, Navy Blue, you know, that classic jumper, Collingwood, the black and white stripes, MCG, the expanse of green. That's football to me. That's as good as it gets, isn't it? That's it. Don't get any better, especially yeah. when they're both going. You know, and it's great this week for us to go out. You know, if we can put you out of out of business again for two years in a row, geez, won't that be something? Not going to happen, Ed. Not, <laughs> not this time we'll around. We'll see what happens. Without a test, there can be no testimony. And I think the Blues have uh, endured enough tests to to be able to learn from their mistakes and, and take that next step. But yeah, I'll, we'll see. I reckon I'll, we'll flog you. But anyway, there you go. <laughs> so, how did you how do you reflect on? I mean, obviously, a childhood Collingwood hmm. supporter. Obviously, became president. How do you reflect on being on the outside and then going on the inside and leading the club? And obviously, now at this stage of of your life. Well, look, I'm a bit different in that, as I said, I started writing for the papers when I was 13. So suddenly yeah. I had, a, I had a, you know, a VFL media pass, as it was, and then I started at Channel 10 while I was at secondary school. So I've been in it. I've been at, you know, right, you know, for, for years now. You know, I started when I was, as I said in the paper, 13 or 14, 13 I think it was, and then 17 at Channel 10 and, uh, you know, everything in between. So it has been a great experience because obviously the footy show um, – took football to a new era. In 1987, uh, the ABC paid $850,000 for the entire year of AFL football, right? It's, you know, two million well, a match now. You yeah. know, so the game was just about cooked. And uh, then the footy show came in as well, and the AFL started, and uh, Ross Oakley and the commission got in there and changed it up. So, you know, I've been involved, uh, you know, in, in a lot of the things for a, for a long time and have seen... You know, the, the downside of Carlton, you know, where Carlton went from being, you know, the team that was the smart team, you know, instigating buying a quarter of the North Melbourne Football Club with, you know, John Elliott and Collo and these guys and, you know, the, the raids in the state and everything that was happening in those days, you know, Carlton were to the forefront, you know. And, and in fact, you know, people, if you look back at what John Elliott did at Carlton in what he was trying to set up for Princess Park, he was... He was years ahead of everyone on that. Even right. even when people don't may not remember that uh, Carlton actually tried to merge with the Sydney Swans at one stage to play eleven games in Melbourne, eleven games in Sydney. You know, New South Wales is known as the Blues, and it would have worked. And uh, mm -hmm. it only got stopped because Alan McAllister, President of Collingwood, realised how big this would make Carlton, and he vetoed it. But ultimately, it was the right decision. And years later. I made the same suggestion that Collingwood should have gone up and played seven games on the Gold Coast um, and to build it up rather than put them in from scratch. And that was off the back of, you know, watching, reporting, 
discussing these things with, with John Elliott and Colo and these really smart play, people in football. So, um, you know, you know, you look at it, you look at it now, had, had Princess Park, probably John was but you know, trying too hard for Carlton on that. But, uh, you know, he was on the right track, no doubt about it. But uh, that, that period for Carlton uh, after the salary cap, uh, it was a hard period. They, they probably should have bounced a lot quicker, um, but they went through a, a hard period and it was the demise of Carlton. And, you know, it was only a matter of time before they came good. Because you know, yeah. you know, the of clubs, clubs too. You know, I came in a similar circumstances at Collingwood. You know, we won the flag in 1990 and by the time I took over, we were cooked in 1998. So it doesn't take long to do so. But, you know, um, I, I look at the Blues now. I mean, you know, Vossi is a guy I respect and I know. Luke Sayers is a bloke I know who's you know, doing really good things for the club. So I don't worry about Carlton anymore. Not that, you know, I did worry about him a little bit. Not that, it, you know, I lost much sleep over it. It was a, a pleasurable uh, <laughs> nightmare. But you, as I said, you don't want Carlton going. You know, uh, of it's as simple as that. And, uh, you know, Carlton is good for business. And at this point, we get 85, 90,000 on a, on a Friday night in the middle of winter. It's going to be fun, fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Where does, where does the game go from here? How do we expand the game? Do we go global? Do you have a, a philosophy uh, on that? I think I've always said um, that the AFL should look at what American football, the NFL, is to America. You know, when people, Americans, ask me, what is this game you're talking about, Aussie football? I said, they, they can't compute until you actually say, Australian football is to Australia what the NFL is to America. You know, it's largely not played anywhere else. It's not soccer. It's not rugby. It's an it's a indigenous, distinct game that absolutely captures the imagination. And, and just as American football, to me, has got a lot of the hallmarks of America, corporate, regimented, structured, all those types of things, you know, aggressive. Australian rules football to me is the personification of what we'd like to hold true for Australians. Egalitarian, doesn't matter how tall you are, how big you are, whatever, in you go. The person with the Sharon is the most important person in, in the world. You know, deep devotion to your clubs, the rivalry of inner city Melbourne expanding out to the national competition. So that's the way I look at it. So I think what we need to do, for me, most importantly, is to be Australia's team, Australia's game. Um, you know, we need, if, if I was in charge of the AFL, I'd have GWS playing 10 games in, in West of Sydney and 10 games in Canberra and own the nation's capital. I'd have Gold Coast playing in Cairns. I'd have them playing in Darwin. I'd have them playing in Alice Springs. No need for those two teams to be playing more than a couple of games in Melbourne. They can play, gather around and they can play a couple of games in Melbourne, but they should be doing that. And I would absolutely go back to the old days where Carlton would be not wearing anything other than navy blue. And you know my position on Collingwood's jumper, and uh, you know, and I think that's that's stood the test of time. Yeah, you know, everyone likes to have these things. Oh, it's all marketing. I think that's complete bullshit. Now, Collingwood sells more jumpers than anyone, and by a fair way. Why? Because families know that if you buy the Collingwood jumper, you're going to see it run out onto the MCG. Either it's black and white or white and black, and that fixed with the distinction. I fixed the shorts up, which is the major issue as far as clashes is concerned. But outside of that, the traditional teams in football need to play their role by being traditional teams. The expansion teams need to play their role as marketing teams, and we get that whole AFL as being the number one uh, sport in Australia and by a fair way. That's why I keep arguing we need to get a twilight grand final so that we don't get beaten by three state of origins and an NRL grand final or the final you know, edition of maths or something like that. Don't leave money on the table. Get yeah. the eyeballs. Get into Sydney in New South Wales. Get into Queensland. The mm -hmm. AFL and Gold Coast are doing a good job at the moment. Mm -hmm. There are going to be three players out of the Gold Coast who are going to be in the top 10 in the draft or top 20 in the draft this year. That's what we need to do. Cultivate the best and brightest. We've got the Olympics coming to town. You've got NRL who are, who are no mugs. You've got a big push from, from soccer. You know, we've got to make sure we're getting the best athletes playing our game. And that's the yeah. way to what about the the eyeballs outside of Australia? I mean, I, I obviously play in the YouTube space, so yeah, I'm in in that content world. Um, yeah, how do we how do we get more eyeballs on the game? Because I mean, in my eyes, and I'm sure you're the same. This is the greatest yeah. game on earth. Well, I'm I sure think I think part of the where there was a I mean, I, I don't know how this happened, but 
you know, we used to be on ESPN when ESPN started we being AFL footy or the AFL footy. Yeah. And they had AFL, they had Australian football and tractor pulling basically was what they had until they, they got going. And a lot of people still remember that. So the, the problem with having YouTube and apps and the AFL Live app is sensational. I've been overseas the last uh, month and, uh, you know, I've watched everything. I was watching, you know, Fox footy and, you know, you're able to get, uh, you know, the nine footy shows on nine now and, you know, the digital age is just sensational. You know, I could have set up shop over in, you know, in Italy and, you know, hosted my shows basically from there. Um, so from that point of view, but what you're not getting is you're not getting the casual person flicking around. Uh, now, does that exist anymore? Because, you know, we are tailored into our thinking. You know, you, you, you're not sort of sitting there watching shows and going, what's this? I'll, I'll watch this so much now. You watch what you want to watch and then you go to YouTube or you go to Netflix or you understand, you go into free to wear. So it's a lot more curated to your own abilities or, or your own sensitivities. And, uh, you know, that's the way it actually works now. The algorithms provide you, but you end up in an echo chamber in a lot of ways. So to your point, though, YouTube is is fantastic. Yeah, we need shows like yours. We need, you know, I, I would love to see, you know, all our footy shows ending up somewhere, you know. So the nine shows, the seven shows, the Foxtel shows, they should be on there. Now, you know, there's always a battle between all the networks, but for the good of the game, it would be far better if they ended up so that you could, you could watch those shows. But uh, the, the key, again, to your point is, You've got to get people watching um, and understanding the uh, the intricacies. You know, yes, it, it's all, all very well, but me being able to tell you now, but you know, you're born in the '90s. You don't know half the the, the rationale behind the Collingwood Carlton traditions. You know, and I'm not sure if you're aware that in 1970, 19, 1918, 17, 18, uh, grand final, the two best Collingwood players were were training to go to Gallipoli out at the Broadmeadows Army Camp. And the regimental sergeant major was a Carlton supporter, made him do a 10 mile full kit march on the morning of a grand final. You cheated again. You know, they're, they're, they're the things. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, Jock McCall uh, fixed him up a few years later. He made one of the Carlton players work in the boiler room at Carlton United Brewers on the Saturday before the grand final, which we won. So, so there's, you know, there's all those great stories. And, and they're the stories that we need to get out there. So, not that doesn't have to be back in 1910. We can, talk about the heartbreak of last year for you blokes but why that was so exciting for Collingwood because of the heartbreak of 79 and 81 and generational heartbreak yeah yeah well, it is but that's that's why it's there that's why we turn up we turn up because we want to beat Carlton two things always you get the fixture you got to win two games you got to be Carlton at home Carlton away absolutely the rest of the season takes care of itself yeah yeah where are you what's your situation Friday where do you where do you well, park I'm yourself sitting with McClure um, mm. But he can't turn up now. Uh, I've got Daisy Thomas, and I've told him you're barracking for the pies. So you know, don't come into the, don't come into my box if you if you're thinking of you know being you know Carlton bloke. Um, but yeah, so we, but I do I, I invite my Carlton mates and uh, we sit there because you again you want the rivalry you want you want to feel it you know when when Carlton were in front of three quarter time you know last year, um, you know that's it means something when you've got the Carlton supporters around you. So it's great. So I will. I'll sit in the box um, uh, and uh, and watch it. You know, it's it's a it's a good experience. Yeah, you know, I love being out in the crowd, but uh, it's just it's just easier for us to for do, to do it this week. So yeah. we're there bright and early and getting ready ready to go. Fantastic. Final predictions. What for the game? Yeah. Oh, I think Pies win. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Pies are going well, and uh, yeah. I think got a few injuries. Depends. Uh, if Cripps doesn't play, you're in trouble. Um, Cheryl will come back, I think. Uh, there's uh, Mackay's a big out. I, I can't believe any anyone is saying that Carlton should get rid of Mackay. I hope so. That'll that'll lead to another ten years. Of that'll help everybody else again, wouldn't it? Of course it will. Of course it will. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Kerno's a, a great player. He's, he's so exciting. You know, um, so we have to stop him. But uh, I'd love to see more go to him, and that would be a great matchup. So yeah, looking forward to it. Very good. Well, uh, Ed, mate, appreciate your time. Really do, and. Um, it's good for the rivalry to be able to chat with you and get a bit of a history lesson. And yeah. uh, I wish you all the best, just not Friday night, okay? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's funny. I, I think I'm the only Collingwood president that the Carlton Cheer Squad used to wear badges with my head on it uh, <laughs> back in the day. Barb and uh, and Phil and Jenny and all the gang down there at Carlton. Uh, you know, we used to get them on the, on the footy show. 
but uh, they lived in Broadie. In fact, uh, you know, Jenny and Phil used to live uh, two blocks from my house where I grew up in Broadmeadows and, and Barb, of course, I've known for years. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're great times. Yeah, they're, they're, there's, every club has its has its DNA and we have to celebrate that. You know, the AFL tend to homogenise the whole competition at times, uh, you know, but I, I really love that aspect, you know, uh, when, when, you know, the Carlton supporters were giving it to Collingwood and Collingwood were giving it to Carlton. As I said, that's what it's all about. So we look forward to a, another chapter in this ever-evolving uh, history between these two wonderful clubs that played each other more times than any other club. And as I said, uh, quite remarkably, I think there's only three wins Collingwood's way after the Blues have probably held it since, I think, uh, 19, I think 1981 you got in front of us uh, wow. after Collingwood had been in, in, in front for years. So, yeah. The, the, the series continues, and uh, yeah, the great thing is, I always say, is uh, no injuries, no reports, and, and let's see who wins the game. I like it. I like it. Thanks, Ed. No injuries, no reports, and may the umpires play no part in it. That's what Absolutely. I should say. <laughs> Good on you, Terry. All the best, mate.